Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another episode of Miles Edge with Ace Attorney Investigations. In the last episode we were able to come into Alabast uh, and we met a few um, people that I didn't expect. Uh, uh, Bad, Detective Bad is back here um, and also Damas II has been murdered so there are two, two murders which is kind of strange. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just investigating right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue doing that. Alright, let's go. Um. Is this spot somehow gonna do Larry, about this spear. Oh! Are you feeling it? BAM! I thought there was something strange about this spear. Tell me, Larry. Is it just me or is the spear a bit bent? B -b 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 what? No way! It's exactly as it should be, yo! I have here the autograph you wrote for me earlier. Now take a good look at the- at which- at the, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry. You can see that the spear is clearly of a different shape. <laughs> what do you have to say to that? <laughs> I'm sorry! When I hold the spear in my hands, all of a sudden I feel super powerful! And then, during practice, I'm spinning it around and around, and BAM! It hit the wall! You unbelievable! This is an embassy! But I've always been like that, ever since I was a kid. One time over an overnight field trip, I bought a fake sword and played with it late, at, late that night. I'm just a useless, hot-blooded man! Larry, clarify that for me, will you? Okay, so it was some field trip and I began to shadow fight with myself. Not that! I meant what you said earlier about spinning the spear and hitting the wall. Oh, that! It's no biggie. It's not like I left a hole or anything. That's not why I'm asking, Larry. The samurai spear is made of metal. I somehow doubt that a move as simple as spinning it around would cause it to bend. <laughs> Man, Edgy, you're so naive. W what? Where did that come from? Well, you keep calling the seals... You keep calling it the samurai spear. But it's not real. You can't really fight someone with it. Because it's hollow on the inside. You could hit it against practically anything and it would but bend. Is that so? Don't tell me you thought it was real. Well, but don't take it the wrong way. I just think that part of your personality is cute. I see. Your friendship is truly something special, Miles Edgeworth. Ugh! That's not friendship, it's utter humiliation! Oh, damn it, Larry. You're more powerful than I thought. I shouldn't have underestimated you. Oh, damn it, Larry. Oh, I haven't talked to Lang. I'm, I'm an idiot. You did some investigating over in the Bobbley's embassy too, right? I did. Is there a problem? Lang Ji says, A wolf who aims to hunt for two rabbits at once. I believe the in you require is he who runs after two hares will catch neither. Heh. <laughs> A real wolf can catch both. I see. So what are you trying to say, seeing as how I am currently handling two cases? Heh. <laughs> Suit yourself. But don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, this asshole. It's a fireplace. And by the looks of it, I don't think it's been used recently. Yes, I can't say that I see anything unusual about it. The person shaking hands with the steel samurai in this picture is... Ambassador Alba. It was taken just before the murder. The steel samurai must be very popular, even using the national treasure as a backdrop. I just don't understand. What exactly is so great about Top Knot there? Hm. Clearly there is a to this show that a young person like you can't fathom. Speaking of young people, aren't young children the target audience of this show of costumed actors? Why the hell are you watching it? I never said I watched it, Francisca. What the frick? Hmm. Two gorgeous flowers are in bloom here. I'm sure flowers as lovely as these must have an equally as lovely name. Miles Edgeworth, are you done staring? I should hardly think passion flowers are all that rare. Passion flowers? That's a rather unusual name. It was named by priests in the 15th century for the Passion of Christ. Hmm, as they say, you learn something new every day. Okay. This must be Ambassador Abba's desk. 
His notebook is open on his desk. He must have been in the middle of some important work. Sapling growth log. It finally sprouted today. Funny, doesn't look like important work to me. Have I talked to Bad? I have talked to Bad, I'm dumb. I thought something was weird about this. Oh my god, yeah, it's facing the wrong way. I was like, that looks like a weird Primaduck statue. Look at this photo and tell me what you find odd about this scene, Miss Front Karma. The apparent joy in the ambassador's face as he shakes the top knot's hand. That's not it. I was trying to point out that the statue in the photo is facing a different way. You're right. This statue is a national treasure. As such, only an ambassador or a secretariat-level person is allowed to handle it. The fact that the statue is facing one way in this photo, and now it's facing a different direction in this preserved crime scene, is proof that someone touched the statue around the time of the crime. Hmm, I guess that about wraps up my investigation. Hmm? That's... A pink princess! Yo, Pink Princess! How you feeling? Still feeling ill? And yet another strange character comes out of the woodwork. And so the Pink Princess also comes to pay the Alabastian Embassy a visit. I believe I may need to speak with her as well. Hello, Miss Pink Princess. I'm a big fan. Can I have your autograph? Miss Pink Princess, I have a few questions I'd like to ask of you. Can you please give me your autograph? Miss Pink Princess, if you would please answer. Oh no. Me! Oh no. Oh. How could this happen two days in a row? What the? Aren't you Miss Obeg? Why are you so surprised? Ah, so you're the one they got to play the Steel Samurai. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. You are acquaintances with Larry? Why, yes. We worked at the same company for a little while, you know. That's why it's okay, my edgy poo. You don't need to be jealous. Ugh. I was in the next room, you know, trying to get some beauty sleep. But it was so noisy here that I couldn't fall asleep, so I came over to complain. So imagine my shock when I saw my precious edgy poo here waiting for me. I mean, who could have imagined that you would ever come to a show like this? I guess I misjudged you, edgy poo. You misjudged him. I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. There was no misjudgment on your part. That's precisely what I was trying to do. But it looks like the winds have shifted and now he's willing to be chased after. I'm simply overwhelmed. Don't you worry, Edgy Poo. I'll chase you for forever to the ends of the earth. Isn't that just peachy? This is one of those rare times when Francisca and I are actually, actually see eye to eye. Please get this woman out of here. Now then, uh, uh, what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewaterland as the Pink Badger. What are you talking about? That was ages ago! That was yesterday! Look, I worked at Global Studios before, a long time ago, right? Well, they called me up this morning, kind of out of the blue, actually. They called you? Apparently, the girl who plays the Pink Princess collapsed from a bad cold. It happened so suddenly, so they called me in to be her last-minute replacement. Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? I really couldn't say no, so here I am playing the role of the heroine. Instead of that Mindy girl, I mean. But the poor girl, I feel bad for her. Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time when she returns. I mean, I'm not exactly great at reading the stage, but to be stand in at the very last second, I do that with the original samurai. I don't know if I got to feel it's with simpletons. You're a rather lively, old lady. So basically, you received the stand-in request this morning, correct? You got it! If you need to see it, I got it right here. Look! It appears that she is telling the truth. Unfortunately. I tell you, my fine acting moved the entire audience to tears! Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. But being famous has its problems too, you know. Here, take a look at this. 
It's a letter from a stalker. I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under the, the door to my room. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look what it says. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. Your loving knight. Hmm, how absolutely revolting. I mean, you think he could get my name right? There's no accident in my name. Wait, this horrible handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Ah, oh, but now that you're here, Reggie Poo, I feel 100% safe. Huh? Well, I... Where do I factor into this? You'd bust that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Edgy Poo? Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this in my own way, I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Edgy Poo. Stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get. I'm not playing hard to get. I don't want you to be around me. What were you doing at the time of the crime? What crime? What? After the show was over, I had nothing to do but free time on my hands. So I used the fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. Okay. Well, the murder occurred in the room right next to yours. Is that right? Oh, Edgy Poo, I'm so scared. Hold me. Caress me. If you could please not cling on to my personage. In any case, I take it then that you managed to- that you failed to show up at Ambassador Alba's speech? Oh, that. No, I didn't go. I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden, but my body just refuses to cooperate at times. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move it at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, you just go on ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to this embassy. I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave that room is rather pleasant. Prosecutor Von Karma, I brought the police dog as you requested, sir. Good work. You may leave now, officer. Hmm, this dog. I requested the assistance of a dog in our search for the Adagarasu. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country, too. He's so cute! Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. That's a police dog gum she's been taken care of. I think its name is... Missile. What a fitting name for a police dog that dashes out in front and attacks. That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know. Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! He's so cute! What a good little boy! What a good boy! Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now what do we have here? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... Hmm? Wait, Francisca, isn't that an official samurai dog? <coughs> no! Bad missile! Hmm. He ate it. I wonder if it's alright for him to eat that? It's just a meat substance snack featuring the steel samurai. I'm sure he'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you got there in a single quick glance. We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. Hmm? Looks like that snack wasn't all Miss found. Oh? And what do we have... here? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. Whew! I somehow doubt that. Doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. A samurai dog and a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Even the circumstances, the lady's undershirt could only belong to one person. I suppose I should get this over with and ask the owner of said undershirt about it. Old bag. Your theme perfectly encapsulates you. If you could please take a look at this brown-colored undershirt. Oh, Edgy Poo, what is the meaning of this? Why did you steal that thing from my bags? All you had to do was ask, and I would have gladly given it to you, given you as many as you'd like. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. This shirt was found here at this crime scene. What? Come now. Why don't you just confess and explain what it's doing here? I, I know nothing. Nothing, I tell you. What? Oh, I admit that I used the fireplace to dry that shirt, but I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know. Wearing that pink princess costume was like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get fingered as a suspect? You do cruel, Edgy Poo. Are you claiming that you never once set foot inside this room? Of course I am! If I'd been the one to find the body, you'd think I'd be as calm and relaxed as I am? I tell you, it's always like this. Tabloid articles are missing, a is missing, that lover's missing, they're missing, a husband, their husband, can you believe what I said? 
What kind of man is that? I don't deserve you, but I cannot help you. Would you marry me? Obviously, men these days. Um, well, I don't believe she is lying about her actions. So I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on her break. And somehow the undershirt managed to move from the next room into this one. I assume the samurai dog was also yours? Ah, that brilliant mind of yours. You really can see through everything about me. And so the feeling of dread continues, but I suppose I should ask for more details. Goodness me. That samurai dog was yours, wasn't it? Oh, of course! I'm forever yours, my edgy wedgy poo! If you could just stick to what I asked you! Edgy, are you in Miss so Bag? No! You really don't change, do you? When will you learn to take a joke? Anyway, that samurai dog wasn't mine. Those things are a present from the studio to the embassy. A present? The studio Baywoods basically told us to play delivery boys. We were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy and people and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the push cart just to move them all. No studio guys should have delivered those things by themselves, right, Edgy? So did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instructions? Hey, Edgy! Don't just ignore me and my question! Aren't you gonna stick up for me? Ah, uh, about that. See, after the show, I went to rest in a spell. I went to rest a spell in the dressing room, because of my bad hip, you know. And there they were. The samurai dogs were just sitting on the dressing room floor. I suppose you had to make preparations for distributing them after the show? Well, if by preparation you mean sampling them as well. Excuse me? Oh, I tried one and thought they were actually quite good. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but... I figured that since they're for a kid's show, their taste was probably for kids too. But they were so good that I couldn't stop. Before I went back to my room, I just had to help myself to a half a dozen or so boxes. As I sat there by the roaring fire, warming and eating, warming them and eating them, I thought, ah, oh, this is... Hmm, what is it now? Oh, I know. I bet you want a box too, don't you, my edgy poo? Well, who am I to say no to you? But I'll only give you one. The rest are all for me. Samurai dogs forced onto me. Looks like the lesson for today is that when the Steel Samurai and the Pink Princess take off their masks, they transform into a pair of annoying troublemakers. With a capital T. Oh, God. Okay. Logic. Um... There is no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is? Ahem. <clears throat> Smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to this fireplace. At least according to Larry. This is a contradiction of facts, is it not? Are you sure he wasn't just disoriented or something up on that roof? There is testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. So no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. On the other hand, the fireplace in the next room was being used at the same time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace went? Ah, I see. So what you are proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from Miss Olbeck's fire. So basically the fireplaces of neighboring rooms. Share one chimney. Is that what you are implying? Okay. Precisely. Ah. And let me do this logic. The ladies undershirt that missile found. Oh! Why are you getting all excited over holding onto a lady's undergarment? Miles Edgeworth, you uncouth sea slug! If you know the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already! You have it all wrong! This is evidence! And the owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet despite that, missile found it in the fireplace of this room. This lady's undershirt. Are you seriously claiming that it somehow passed through a solid brick wall? Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney. Leading us to the possibility that the two fireplaces are connected to each other. Perhaps a closer look at the back of the fireplace is in order. There is an X on the back of the wall of the fireplace. Let's see if I can get a better look at it. But what in the- 
The wall separating this room's fireplace from the next room's fireplace apparently turns. As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect this room to the neighboring room. The neighboring room? There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. But the fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what's important. It's the fact that there is a secret passageway through this room's fireplace. We now know that the fireplace connects the two rooms. But how exactly is that significant? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as Damask 2's killers now, are you? No, she couldn't move at all because of her steep hip. So she could not have been the one. Unfortunately, I believe that this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with, Mas with Damask's Damask 2's murder. Okay. It would appear that the answer has made itself known. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. Very well, then. If you are prepared. I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good! I'm counting on you, Edgy! Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be... to expose your lie for what it really is. But my lie?! I know that there is still something you are keeping from the rest of us. What's wrong with you? Why is it you won't believe me no matter what I say, Edgy? Curse you! I should just hurry up and die already if that's how it's gonna be! I'll confess to every murder in the whole world and then kill myself! And then throw everything into mass confusion! <laughs> you made some wonderful friends as a child, I see. Larry, I only have one thing to say to you. Even if you make that face at me, it's no use! A man who's ready to die is strong-willed, you know! Larry, it doesn't matter what sort of harebrained trouble you've caused. I only ask that you do not lie to me. If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some insipid lie, I will never forgive you. <laughs> Although allow me to say that I consider you to be among the innocent in this case, and that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. Alright, I... I... This time... This time I'll tell you the whole truth, okay? What happened, what didn't happen, the works! Just what happened will do. Now then, if you would please testify as to what you did up on the roof that night. Alright. And that is actually where we're going to stop for today. Roll the end card. Objection! You haven't hit like and subscribe yet! Hold it! You forgot to ring the bell to get notified whenever I upload! Take that! Click here to watch more of my videos! Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!